Oh, parietal. Pariah. I'm looking up how to pronounce this word because I have no clue how to pronounce it right now. Parietal cell vegato me. Parietal cell All right, lady. Vegato. All right, that's enough of you. <laughs> What's up guys? Welcome back to another TLG gaming topic commentary where we talk about nature. The nature of video games, perhaps. <laughs> no? But here is the dill pickle. Okay, a lot of people tend to think that, you know, video games are geared towards children because that's, you know, the average gamer. But that's simply not true. Even though 90% of children play video games, the average age of a gamer is 33 years old. That's a whole lot of adults poning children. This pleases me a lot. Now, statistics wise, okay, that's actually 70% of household owners, meaning that a lot of your people out there that own property are also getting it dirty on some video games. But the average age hasn't always been 33 years old. Back in 2005, it was actually 24. So over the last 10 years, it has risen significantly. Scientists, researchers, game developers, everybody tends to think that the age is going to steadily increase. Now this doesn't mean that grandpa is gonna be playing Grand Theft Auto, but it does mean that that is a possibility. But so where does all of this negative controversy come from? I'll give you a good example. Back in December of 2010, Activision released statistics for Call of Duty Black Ops stating that after only one month of video game sales, Call of Duty Black Ops had grossed over 600 million gameplay hours. That's 68,000 freaking years, which is about as old as my grandma. I'm just kidding, Grandma. Okay, I love you. Mwah. But it's statistics like this that make people tend to think that, you know, video games are a waste of time. When you give that one little stat to a newspaper publisher, they take it, they run with it, they print an article anywhere in the world and people are going to read it because they know their children are freaking playing video games. But the funny thing is that they are also playing video games. I'm talking to all the parents out there. Playing Angry Birds on your lunch break and shit. You're not fooling anybody. But don't get me wrong, okay? I know you can have too much of anything. You can drink too much water, you can eat too much broccoli, and again, you can play way too much video games. So it's really never a good thing to binge unless you're watching Netflix. All my House of Cards fans out there, let's get it. <laughs> New season just came out, bitches. <laughs> but seriously, okay, cognitive researcher, AKA a freaking brain scientist, that goes by the name of Daphne Bavlier has argued the fact that video games in moderation are very good for you. Now her first study finds that five to 15 hours of gameplay per week actually correlates with better vision and mental awareness. She actually found that video gamers can effectively identify small detail in the context of clutter. This is basically like if you're reading the small print on a medicine bottle or if you see a newbie sniper off in the distance in a Call of Duty match and you're like, oh, hey sniper, let me take out my throwing knife and just, ooh. Oh, what happened sniper? Did I hit you with a throwing knife? Freaking noob. So yes, you can see how identifying small detail can help in real life and also in video games. But the other thing that she found is that gamers can dissolve different levels of gray much more effectively. Now this is like if you're driving in a car and it's really foggy outside and there's a gray car in front of you. You can differentiate those levels of gray to know when to stop if that car breaks in front of you. But what about the myth that video games have an effect on people's attentional awareness? Well, my girl Daphne also proved that to be wrong. The first test that she ran involved the words that you see on your screen right now. She simply would just flash these words in front of their research subjects 
and tell them to identify the color of the word. And surprisingly, she found that video gamers were much quicker at saying the color of the word when suddenly flashed in front of them. How this applies to real life, I have no clue. Well, I guess perhaps if you're at the dinner table and your brother freaking throws a hamburger at your face and you're like, oh, here comes a hamburger, let me move. But the next thing that she found out was that gamers, again, were better at keeping track of objects that were moving around them. Now this can be applied to if you're driving a car and while you're driving, you see you know, the person riding on the bike, the car next to you, the stoplight off in the distance, or even the hot chick that's running on the sidewalk. What's up girl? How you doing? Let me get them digits. <laughs> but yes, she found that video gamers can keep track of objects uh, more effectively and that the average person that doesn't play video games at all can only keep track of about three objects moving around in their vision, whereas the average gamer can keep track of six to seven objects at a time. That's a huge fucking difference. I don't even know how that's possible, but it is. Hashtag gamers for life. Now the thing that I found most interesting is that while they were doing all of this research, they were actually examining the parts of the brain that process vision and attentional awareness information. They found that the parietal lobe, frontal lobe, and anterior cingulate all process vision and attentional awareness information faster if you play video games. Now, like I said earlier, too much of anything is bad, but these researchers are willing to compare playing video games to wine. Now, just like when you're drinking some wine, don't even think about it, grandma. Okay, you've probably already had like three or four glasses. It has a lot of long-term health benefits. Now, Daphne proved that video games also have a long-term positive effect. To do this, they ran mental rotation tasks on their subjects. Now, what this is, is basically they show a test subject a 3D object, and then they give them a second to process it, and then bam, they show three or four additional images, and you have to pick which one of those images is the exact same shape. Think it's easy to do? How about we test that shit? So here we go, there's your object right there on your screen. Process it in your freaking mind. You have the shape down. Now I'm about to reveal images right next to it and you have to pick which one of those images is exactly the same shape. Boom, which one is it? <clears throat> so as you can see, playing these mental rotation tasks is pretty damn hard, but they didn't want to test gamers versus non-gamers. So what they decided to do was they grabbed a group of people that had no experience playing video games whatsoever. And then they had them play 10 hours of video games over a series of two weeks. Let's get real, okay. <laughs> I can get that done in one day. Especially if Halo 5 just came out. So yes, after two weeks of just playing 10 hours of video games, every single subject had increased test results. Now, but here's the amazing thing. They didn't allow them to play any more video games, and yet five months later, all of them still had the same positive test results. So that's where the importance of the long-term positive effects of video games comes into play. So therein lies the challenge. You know, scientists are trying to work with game developers to put a little bit more educational information within video games, but to also keep it fun. Now, this is hard to do, but it's possible. Now, many of you know about my love for the video game called Viva Pinata. And even though I wanna go off on a huge spiel about how much I love it, I won't, and I'll keep it simple. But basically, the game had a lot of forms of educational tools that were very, very subtle, including the use of mathematics, agriculture, and multiple forms of responsibility. Now, I'm not saying that Every single game has to be geared towards children in order to make education fun because there's a lot of things that I think you can do with even mature rated games. I think a cool example of that would be if you had to use some form of mathematics in order to hack into a certain device in like some type of spy game or something. I don't know, I think something like that would be pretty cool. So you can see where I'm going here. However, with everything being said within this video, I think the thing to focus on is the effect that video games has on society gets a bad rap because of the small percentage of people that abuse it, rather than looking at the many benefits that come from being a responsible gamer. But thank you for tuning in, guys. I hope you really enjoyed the video. I'll leave a link to Ms. Daphne Bavlier's uh, TED Talks 
speech where she talks about a lot of this information in much more detail. But again, thank you for tuning in. Leave a comment below telling me what you thought of it. Go share the video with your friends and spread a little love by clicking that thumbs up button. And dude, seriously, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, then like, what have you been doing for the last 10 minutes? What? <laughs> but I'll see everybody here in a couple days, okay? Keep living that life. Hold up. Because that's what thugs do, baby. Take it easy, guys.